Welcome back on this Wednesday. Glad that you're sticking around as we hit the second part of Micah chapter 6. Remember Micah chapter 6, the first verse started uh, with a call of the Lord to hear his words, and we see something similar as we begin with verse 9. The voice of the Lord cries to the city, and it is sound wisdom to fear your name. Hear of the rod and of him who appointed it. Can I forget any longer the treasures of the wickedness in the house of the wicked and the scant measure that is accursed? Shall I acquit the man of his wicked scales and with a bag of deceitful weights? Your rich men are full of violence. Your inhabitants speak lies. Their tongue is deceitful in their mouth. Again, the indictment of the Lord against the wealthy people of, of, of Judah. They, they are doing what they think is best. Their sense of morality of right and wrong is gone. They cheat people with the scales. The rich men are full of violence. You kind of picture them like mob bosses who are not afraid to put someone to death uh, so that they can better themselves. They lie. They have deceit in their mouths. It is an immoral, unloving place. So what does God say? Verse 13. Therefore, I strike you with a grievous blow, making you desolate because of your sins. You shall eat but not be satisfied, and there shall be hunger within you. You shall put away, but not preserve, and what you preserve I will give to the sword. You shall sow, but not reap. You shall tread olives, but not anoint yourself with oil. You shall tread grapes, but not drink wine. For you have kept the statutes of Omri and all the works of the house of Ahab, and you have walked in their counsel, that I may make you a desolation and your inhabitants a hissing, so that you shall bear the scorn of my people. As we look at this in, in just the poetic situation to begin with, verse 14, there are two parallel statements there that, that they begin, it's, it's, you know, you shall eat, you won't be satisfied. In fact, you will be hunger, hungry. You shall store but it won't be preserved. And what is preserved will be taken away. You see, it keeps building on those. And then 13 is uh, three parallel sets. You shall row, sow, but not reap. Tread olives, but not anoint yourself with oil. Tread grapes, but not drink wine. Those reminders of, of while they think they are doing something good, uh, what they should do, God will take away from them what they are storing up, all of their false wealth. This is, as we see in verse 13, what the Lord is doing. He is striking down those who are rich, those who use their wealth and their power to oppress other people. Going down to verse 16, for you have kept the statutes of Omri and all the works of the house of Ahab. Omri was uh, one of the kings of Israel, the northern country. In fact, he was the one who uh, founded, created the capital city of Samaria of how um, the northern kingdom is known as Samaria. He was a founder. He was a, a, a forefather of Ahab. He, Ahab was of the house of Omri. And he was one of the most wicked kings. There's a story of him and Nahum and how he took Nahum's uh, vineyard uh, because he wanted it. Uh, and that was the only reason. He used deceit and lies to get what he wanted, much like the people of Israel, or of, uh, sorry, of Jerusalem were doing at this time that he is speaking. And it says, you have walked in the, in, in their councils. They have followed the gods of Omri, the gods of Ahab, and not the one true God, not Yahweh the Lord. This false worship 
has from from Samaria has infiltrated Jerusalem and it would lead to its destruction because they are doing what was wrong instead of doing what they should do to do justice love kindness and walk humbly before the God our God as it said in verse 8 yesterday and because they aren't because they are are opposite of what God desires, not trusting in him, but trusting in their own ways and in their lies and deceit that they will be destroyed. Another message of judgment, not much gospel in these, but yet we see that hope often um, in other parts where it points to where God will preserve that remnant. We'll talk more about those uh, tomorrow as we look at, begin with chapter 7. God bless.